SKS St. Petersburg, an elite KHL club. Some say SKS sets an example for the entire league. This is what KHL club is supposed to look like. We came to St. Petersburg to find out if that was true, but also to tell you about one of the most interesting teams, SKA in their 6th KHL season. First of all, it's a great show. The show knows how to entertain fans in St. Petersburg. Instead of going to the movies, you'd be better off at a hockey game. That's where the real action is, and it begins long before the puck drop. They have great pre-game shows and excellent clips on Jambatron. Their goal is to get any type of fan interested in hockey. Other clubs can surely learn from St. Petersburg. They lead the league in terms of sold merchandise and advertisement around the town. Even though they run a tough competition against local soccer clubs in need, SKA was able to become one of the local landmarks, a symbol of St. Petersburg and its philosophy. The result is obvious, just look at the stands. It's all in the little things. Just take this glass for example. It looks like a top-end plasma screen, doesn't it? You come to the rink, take your seat and enjoy HD hockey. Stewards are also very polite and they will never cross the line. They will never get into your comfort zone. TV broadcast from St. Petersburg is the best in the league. The ice looks wide, full-on HD and a 3D replay system. SKA bulked up the roster as they do every year, although this past season they went above and beyond. The biggest success was landing Ilya Kovalchuk. A true world-class star chose SKA over NHL. Along with him, SKA signed Roman Chervenko and Alexey Panikarovsky, who also came from the NHL, but also Vadim Shipachov and Evgeny Kano from Severstal. Judging by the names, SKA has the best offense in the league. They had the second best record in goal score this season, too. Boris stopped them by just seven goals with 182. They say SKA's weakest link is their goaltending. This season, SKA had Ilya Yuzhov, Alexander Solak, and Ivan Nalimov playing in goal for them. Hockey goal is aged like wine. It gets better over time, says Ilya Yuzhov. I learn from my mistakes. I've watched a lot of my games on tape. You shouldn't get too much into what happened last game, but you still have to take something away from every game. Ilya Kolchak taps SKA in time on ice. He's the one who fans come to see. He was worth signing just because of that. He averages 21 minutes of ice time in every game. The uniqueness of his shot stands out even at practice. His shot is considered one of the best in the world. One other ace up his sleeve is penalty shots.
Practice in Wiskovi makes everyone perfect, although you can say the same thing just about everyone else on SKA. Here's 18-year-old Dmitry Yudin. When he learned that he was traded to SKA from Ugra, he couldn't believe it was really happening to him. That's right, I didn't believe I was invited to the preseason camp at first, he says. I didn't even dream playing alongside with all these star players. I felt a little off at first in the dressing room. I got used to it now, though. SKA's top goal scorer this season was Viktor Tikhonov. He played on many lines, and he was equally useful on all of them. We signed some really good guys this season, he says. Take Shipachov and Kerov, for instance, whom we signed from Sevastol. Ilya Kovalchuk, obviously, too. He's a great player, a great captain, and a great man. I think we've got him better as a team. SKA's top puck mover was Roman Chervenka. He had 29 assists and 14 goals on top of that this season. However, at any given day, any SKA player can step up. That's something Arturi Panarin often does. He's just 22 years old, but he's already one of the top scorers on his team. It's fun to watch him even in practice. He has fire in his eyes, and he wants to play. SKA can really use a guy like him. I try to make the most of my ice time, he says. I try to be productive for my team in any possible way. I just want to be a good hockey player. With roster like this, your practices are gonna look a little different from others. They don't look that hard, but only because you're dealing with high-end players. Coaching staff's biggest challenge is to make all these stars work as a team. We're a very skilled team, true, but I think we should be more of a blue-collar team. That's the kind of a team that can go long in the playoffs. There's a lot of media attention to SKA. A dozen reporters visit every practice. It's not unusual to see TV reporters from different networks working side by side. SKA has nothing against it. As a result, their players are recognized on the streets, and St. Petersburg is called a hockey town. What everyone in the league was afraid of becomes a reality. SKA gets more consistent. With every passing year, they get tougher to score on. As for SKS defense, Maxim Chudinov topped the team with plus 30. He's followed by Alex Kuchurevka, who was plus 25, and Alexei Semenov, who was plus 22. The latter, 6'6 six six and 256 pounds. He spent 10 years in North America. You don't want to meet with him in the crease. The hardest thing for me is to play against smaller guys, he says. I can't touch them. No matter what I do, it's gonna be seen as cross-checking and I'm gonna be off for a deuce. It's tough to play against them, so I try to play safe. Every game is a challenge for us. We want to get better. We play to win every game. Sure, you win some, you lose some, but there's never been a game we didn't want to win. This is what SKA's dressing room looked like just hours prior to the home game against Red Army. They're playing in their retro jerseys tonight. They do it out of respect to the history and tradition, but also because it's a good marketing idea. All this hard work, and yet once again, nothing to show for it in the end. SKA was eliminated in the conference semi-final by Lokomotiv. In the seventh season, SKA will have to start over again. If anything, they owe it to their fans and themselves. They worked hard for several years, but is it going to be enough to finally hoist the cup?
навсегда We learn from every game, every playoff run, every series, and every season, says Semenov. But we don't look back. Looking back is degrading. To move forward, you have to look forward. And that's exactly what we're going to do.